and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you someone that's that I had the chance to connect with several years ago. We actually had a chance to work with the Texas Department Association and um, actually spoke in front of some high school students about the careers in multifamily industry. And that's something that I've always remembered my special guest today, Gayla McGowan. Guys, y'all give it up for Gayla. Yay! Hey. Can you hear him yeah. clapping for you? <laughs> yes, I do. I do. You can hear my dog barking for me too. That's right. They're all cheering you on because you're <laughs> you're quite awesome. So thank you so much, Gayla, for for joining us today. And um, I want to give you a chance to share with us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. So not a lot about who I am. I'm Gayla, and I am a wife, mom, sister, daughter. Uh, believer, maybe not in all those orders. <laughs> and uh, I have been in the multifamily industry, uh, feels like since birth, but not. <laughs> um, I, I won't say how long because I think that people can do math. It is it is the morning, so that's when I can do math. So we'll, we'll forego that. I went to school to teach and I wanted to teach second grade specifically because I didn't want the pressure and responsibility of teaching children to read because I felt like I could ruin their lives if they didn't learn to read. So by second grade, they should have already gotten it and it's not my fault. So uh, I went to school to teach and realized that while that's my passion and that's it's a, it's a God-given, uh, I guess, a purpose for mm -hmm. that I need to feel in my, in my life, that's not what my occupation needed to be. Mm. Uh, I wanted to take them all home with me. And oh. if they, I had brushes and their combs and if their moms didn't have time to do their hair before they got, I didn't want them to feel embarrassed because their buddies had their, you know, and they just, so uh, anyway, way more than what <laughs> God created me to be in that role, but then stumbled into multifamily and have been in that industry. And I can honestly say I teach every day. Just don't teach second graders. Sometimes it yeah. feels like I'm teaching Whoa. second graders, <laughs> but I'm not. So I am, and, and where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, that's fantastic. And Gail, I can just tell you have such a heart for people in general. And I've, I've seen you in action connecting with people um, and, and, and your story about the second graders, just that, that empathy of, you know, helping them and making sure they feel comfortable. And and imagine you've translated this this gift, this God-given gift that you have to help people, to help them grow into the multifamily industry with such ease, because like you said, that is such a great purpose. And you do that. I've, I've seen I've seen your your post online and, and you are definitely that individual that has the gift of, of compassion, empathy and and encouraging others to be better than what they are today. So kudos okay. to you. And, and you, you know, Gayla, I love to connect with leaders, inspiring leaders, and you are definitely one of those. And I love to peek behind the curtains and say, what inspires you as such an inspiring leader? And so I reached out to you, asked you to share with me a couple of points. What inspires you? You brought back some amazing points, some great inspirations. And I can't wait to ask you and talk about some of these things. The first one you shared with me, and I love the order in which you shared these. The first one you shared is your faith. And I believe that is such a powerful inspiration, but I want to hear more from you, what that means, what faith means to you and how it inspires you. So faith is a, for me, mm -hmm. has, has had its uh, peaks and valleys. And as I was raised in a very uh, God fearing and church going family. I was blessed to be raised by God fearing church going parents. And there were, you know, some times in life when things happened that just were hurtful and didn't make sense. And then I questioned God and mm -hmm. why would you do that? And why? And so there were times when my faith would maybe not be quite as strong as others. And then as I grew into adult life and had our children, we were not 
attending church. I, I, I've always had faith in my relationship with God, but we weren't necessarily attending church, my husband and I. And so we got to the point where, you know, I'm responsible for these children mm. physically, mentally, and spiritually. Yeah. And so it, how, how do I want to support that for them so that when, as they're growing through, you know, as they're going through life, they can um, have something to rely on yeah. like I do, which is mm -hmm. my faith. And so uh, we, we started going to church and I immediately said, I want to be, I want to help teach mm -hmm. so that I can actually have an active role in, 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 the, in the message. I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that the message first for them and for everybody is that God loves you no matter what. And you are not a bad person. If you make mistakes, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, you pick yourself back up and God loves you anyway. And so uh, I think they feel that as adults. And so that's that's been a big part of my life and, and what I rely on daily. I mean, we mm -hmm. I stumble, I make mistakes, but thank goodness I know he loves me anyway. <laughs> and so I, um, I guess during a, a valley time of my life, a, I came across a, uh, I guess a quote from mm -hmm. uh, Florence Scoville Shin, I guess. And, and not that I, my, my beliefs don't align with hers, but she's very much a, a positive influencer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was reading one of her books that a friend had given me and one of her quotes I've now incorporated into my morning prayer oh, wow. and uh, kind of put my own twist on a few on, a, on it a little bit, but it's uh, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. Today is the day of completion. Thank you for this perfect day. Miracle shall follow miracle and wonders will never cease. Please give me eyes to see and heart to share all the blessings before me. And every morning that's my mantra yeah and that's how i start my day and er, different parts of it mean different things depending on the morning and you know i'll emphasize that i will be done somewhere <laughs> because i'm so into i know what i want to do but then it's like let it go so mm -hmm. my faith my faith in god and then of course my faith in humanity yeah. i love people and i do believe that there's good in all of us and I'll, I'll dig in, until I find that good in you because it's there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Gayla, that's so powerful. And, and, and I truly believe that, you know, faith is such a powerful inspiration because as you said, it gives us that foundation to stand on and knowing that if we do make mistakes, we still have that foundation to, to get back up on because God loves us and he's going to encourage us. Um, and it's such such a powerful thing and and i love how you say thy will be done i mean incorporating that into your daily prayers because we we you know in the flesh we just want to do whatever we want to do but knowing that we've got a great guide to do things you know in his will versus our own will really does help kind of get us through through those days um and 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 i love that faith Faith is belief that things will happen before they do happen. And it's, that's so powerful. I love that. And Gayla, you also shared with me a second inspirational point, which I, I love. You're speaking, you know, you've been speaking my language all this time. The, the second thing you shared is family inspires you. And you added a little nugget with it as well about laughter, uh, which I love. So tell us about how family and laughter inspires you. So my family and laughter are the, the two are synonymous. You can't have one <laughs> without the other. And I was again, blessed to be raised in a very humorous family on my mom's side and my dad's side. And my, my mom, my grandmother, her laugh, I mean, it still echoes today. She was a jolly, joyful individual and and her laugh was so contagious <laughs> and and she was always so positive and and i i just learned through spending time with her and uh, 
I actually spent my senior prom with her instead of going to prom. But she, she just was, there's just this connection with her. But she spread that joy and that positivity. And and so any gathering, I just looked forward to going. Yeah, the food was great. Don't get me wrong. My grandma could cook like in nobody's business. But the laughter, my cousins, my aunts, my uncle, I mean, it was just constant laughter. And so I was blessed to... Uh, stumble upon meet my husband in Austin. We were both going to school working at a Chili's and the sarcasm that was flying in the back of that restaurant <laughs> as we were, uh, I was waiting tables, he was a cook. It, it was comforting. Laughter brings me comfort because mm. it feels like home. And so our children, oh my goodness, when we're all together, it, it's just tears flow. The laughter is <laughs> just amazing. And there's some friends that I have that when we're together, we just laugh and laugh. Mm -hmm. So my family brings that security, that stability, that, ah, oh, I feel that's my, my, my quiet place, I mm -hmm. guess, but not so quiet. <laughs> and, uh, so, but we, we just, we laugh a lot, anything that can bring us humor. And, and it does, we oh. laugh. That's so good. And, and and I love how you, you know, you, your order is starting with family and, you know, given, given, um, you know, love to your grandmother and where that started from that her laughter being so contagious and you've, you've taken that to your, your family here and now. And then you also, you know, love that laughter with your, your friends, your friends of choice, your family of choice. And, and I do, I, you're speaking my language. Laughter is such a great um, outward expression of love, uh, I believe, when you're with the people that you truly care about. Because um, I, I do believe laughter comes from, you know, the right kind of laughter comes from love. And that really does create a just a comforting place um, when you're when you're with family, especially. I love my. Uh, I can't remember where we were but oh it was my daughter sorry so we um had not ever been to ash wednesday and mm -hmm. so this was when she was an adult out of college and so we said you know what I, we want to participate in that so i was raised baptist and my husband was raised presbyterian and so we meshed once we got older like i said when we were trying to find our, our spiritual path with our children and so we we settled on the presbyterian and so we, we attended Ash Wednesday and so we're sitting in the back and, you know, we're already a little kind of, I don't know how this is going to go and, <laughs> but okay, we'll wing it. And we didn't know that they would be passing around the ashes to, to die mm -hmm. on your heads. So when we saw that, we looked at each other and went, don't you dare put this on my nose or put it in my <laughs> and she's like if you don't put it right here <laughs> so nervous laughter i guess but we started laughing and we were kind of towards the back and we were shot you know of course it's a quiet you're you're you know meditating you're in prayer it's prayerful and yeah but we got it, it started and we couldn't control it and it, it's when it starts coming out your nose you're laughing right you're, you're trying so hard because you know and it just makes it worse and so then by the time it got to me and she was supposed to put it on my head her hand was shaking so much it was kind of like all over my forehead and she's oh. crying as she's trying to put it on. And at that point, our pastor like is literally walking down the aisle and is looking at me like, you need to stop. <laughs> but we couldn't, we were, it was uncontrollable. And maybe that's oh not God. respectful to do, but in a great example of, we just, we can find laughter in any moment, unfortunately. Yes. Oh my gosh. And and Gailey, and you know what's so precious about that is you're creating an experience, a memory, a core memory with your family through that laughter, through that, you know, just that bond. I believe that's such a powerful thing. And those core memories of those experiences are so valuable. So now there's more stories to be able to share and create that legacy that'll continue down the line. That's so amazing. Absolutely. And Gayla, you also shared with me one other thing, and I, um, 
that inspires you, and that is music. Um, and I, I love music as well, but you, you've got some great stories about music. And in fact, you, there's a lyric uh, from Yip Harburg that you shared. So share with us a little bit more what music means to you. And, 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 and I'd love for you to talk a little bit about the, the Yip Harburg uh, song. So Yip Harburg is the lyricist and he wrote or penned Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Mm. And so, you know, we kind of see that as the Wizard of Oz song, but when you listen to the words of it, it's actually about a person that's yearning to be somewhere else. And so when you, when you have that in mind and then listen to the song, it's a very powerful mm. message. And so one of his quotes when asked about songwriting he, there were, he had three pieces or three parts to music. And one of them, I guess the first one was, uh, lyrics make you feel, make lyrics make you think thoughts. So the words of the songs make you think. Mm -hmm. And then the music makes you feel feelings. You know, when you hear mm -hmm. certain notes, certain music, you kind of feel if it's you know a a flat or sharp and it, it can make you feel sad or then there's some, some music that make you feel happy and then he combined the two and said songs make you feel thoughts and so that's music for me mm -hmm. and so I wake up listening to music I listen to music all day and that's another very important, uh, I guess, piece of what as parents we passed on to our kids. Mm -hmm. And so there's not any kind of music that inspires me. It all inspires me. Mm -hmm. And so we, our youngest son, he is uh, in college and he, we accidentally got subscribed to his YouTube channel um, when my husband borrowed it for work to do a video. And so my husband keeps getting alerts if there's like a new video or, or something that's, uh, that he's recorded. So he uses it for school. So he's not some YouTuber and what have you, but so my husband got a notification one day recently and my son's taking speech. And so he's having to give these self-recorded speeches and submit them for, for class. And so he gets this alert and it's Trent speaking about Jim Morrison of the doors. So Trent is just turned 20. Oh, wow. And he's talking about Jim Morrison from the doors. And it was like, high five to my, to my husband and I, I, you know, we're, we didn't just keep them in this little box of mm -hmm. just music from your generation, but we were able to take music from our past that mm -hmm. meant something to us and, and then, you know, their music they bring to us. And then, so it was amazing, his story mm. that, or his speech, it was, you know, take all of the negativity about Jim Morrison away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sure. Did he have some troubles and tribulations? We all do. But as far as a, a singer and a, uh, I guess, a interpreter and influencer, his music was amazing. And so he was giving him props in his speech. He felt like he got a bum rap because of the things that he did overshadowed mm -hmm. the talent that he yeah. was given. And so that was, we, we both looked at each other and said, had no idea. That's amazing. <laughs> and then um, my oldest son, Blake, so I have Maggie, Blake, and Trent, and Blake was entering college, and he just wasn't sure, you know, it's that point in life, who am I, what am I, what am I, where am I supposed to be, what am I supposed to be doing? And he was going to school, and he just was, just wasn't his happy self, and mm -hmm. so I was working at the Apartment Association at the time, uh, Tarrant County. And I needed to, um, I was teaching a class or doing a video pr promo for something. And I wanted to take the music from Justin Bieber's 
uh, Justin Bieber song. I uh, can't remember the name of it now, but it starts off very simple guitar. Mm -hmm. And the whole song is very simply played guitar. And so I was like, I think I can learn how to play that. But then I thought, you know, Blake can learn how to play that. So neither one of us plays guitar, right? But he's very musically inclined, can play mm -hmm. any instrument if he works at it. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to go buy a guitar. So I go and I buy not the most, not a very expensive guitar. And so I, at the time, my home office was next to his room. And so I have this guitar and he comes upstairs. And so I start like, I put on my YouTube video that's going to mm -hmm. teach me how to play this song and <laughs> how to turn it up real loud. And yeah. he comes in and he goes, what are you doing? And I go, look, I'm learning how to play the guitar. And he goes, what are you doing? And I said, well, I want to do a video. And this seems like it's a really simple song to play. So I figured I could YouTube it. I said, or maybe you could. I said, do you think you could? And he's like, mom, people have to work. That's a, you can't just start playing a song because, <laughs> and I said, oh yeah, we can. I said, it's just one song and it's right here. And so he, I said, well, you take it work on because I need to keep working on this I've not seen that guitar since oh and gosh. it became his outlet mm. and if you could hear him play now which is what maybe four years five years it's like he's played his whole life wow. it's like he's been trained his whole life and it opened something inside of him that he needed to finish out who he was made to be. Wow. And I know it's the gift of music. And so anytime I can share that gift in, in any way, um, I, I try to do that. We even had karaoke at my last company. I formed a name of it was Oaks Properties and they, uh, so we called it karaoke <laughs> and we would meet for karaoke and to see that my, to see this, the associates outside of work in that mm -hmm. uh, environment singing. Oh my goodness. The laughter, the memories. So music to me is life changing when you, when you find it and you feel it and, and it yeah. becomes part of you. Oh my gosh. Cause it makes you feel thoughts. That's so powerful. Yes. I love it. Gayla, we, this has been such a great conversation. We're getting close to the end of our time. Before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. My closing thought would be, and this has just come recently. So I think it incorporates all of my inspirations that we've touched on today. Mm -hmm. There's a song that the Zach Brown band sings and it's called same boat. Mm. And the lyrics in that song talk about how we're all in the same boat, yeah. drinking from or fishing in the same hole. Mm. We're all working on the same broke cars, wishing on the same bright stars, just trying to get through. And that's inspiring to me. Yeah. That, you know, we take life so seriously. And when we have our challenges, you know, it becomes all about us. And, you know, if we, if we yeah. can just keep our focus outward that, Hey, we're all in the same boat. We're all going through ups and downs, trying to get to the same places and, 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 you know, take care and love. But in that song, it says, if we'll just share a little love and share a little kindness mm -hmm. that um, we'll all get through it and, and be better for it. Wow. Gayla, that's super. I love all your inspiration points. I, I truly believe you, you're speaking my language on all those points um, from faith, family, laughter, music. I mean, those are some incredible things. Typical leadership. I mean, there's those checklist things that you have, but you have to have those solid foundational pieces that don't necessarily look like leadership but that's what truly inspires, encourages people. And Gayla, I love what you've shared with us. We're all in the same boat, heading towards the same locations, but let's be kind and helpful to each other so we can all get there. 
Gayla, thank you so much, team. Make sure you follow Gayla on LinkedIn. Um, amazing leaders, nuggets of wisdom galore from Gayla. It's incredible. Gayla, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. And we will see y'all on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you, Gary.